After many a voyage, crossing vast oceans, a shipping container landed here on the shores of Wellington, New Zealand, where it was transformed into a spectacular family home. Its days of travel may now be over, but really, its journey has only just begun. Hi Kim. Hey Bryce. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. G'day James. Hi Bryce. Great to meet you mate. Yeah, welcome. Guys, these containers look <laughs> stunning. Thank you. Can you tell me first of all, how did you come to be living in a shipping container? Well, <laughs> this is a site that belongs to Kimberly's parents and they had some containers downstairs and one of the containers has a door and a window so it's a bit of a workshop space. We moved into that container doing our silk screen printing t-shirt business and then we were down there working in the shade and we would always look up and see the sunshine and think ah oh, wouldn't it be nice to have something up there that we could live in and then um yeah we went to the council and sounded them out about the idea we had and they were on board and yeah away we went took it from there great so you actually had council cooperation on this project we did they yeah. were incredible they were so supportive and mm. they sort of went through the whole design process with us we even had some advice on how to make this the most sort of eco and passive so like solar ideas and stuff like that so that's something in the future we're hoping to develop as well. There's a few things that we had to have to be a consented house so the roof was a big one and the mm. catching all the rainwater and you know had to meet all the insulation guidelines and double glazing and everything like that like a normal consented house yeah. but it was just a smaller footprint and they were on board with that idea so yeah, that's good. Now this up here is obviously a 40 foot shipping container, isn't it? Well, it was a 40 foot shipping container. Originally. What we did is we took a 40 foot container and then we chopped it smaller. So it's, it's actually feet. 32 feet, 10 meters long. And that was just due to constraints on the site. So we had to be a certain distance from the edge of the site. So 32 feet was it and chopped out a hunk and then put the end back on the container. Yeah. And a very small compromise to be able to yeah. actually situate <laughs> in this incredible location. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, the location makes it, we're just so lucky to be here by the beach and by the bush. Yeah. I grew up around this area and Kim moved around these ways as a teenager. And so it's been awesome to be sort of back here and enjoying all those things that we had when we were growing up. Yeah. Now talk to me about some of the design elements on the exterior of your home. Well, we kept it quite containery, I guess you could say. We had ideas to clad it and things, but yeah. in the end we ended up embracing it. So we put the numbers back on, so it's yeah. kind of got its history and we were able to trace the history of the whole container by looking at those numbers. So kind of, yeah, we've gone right yeah, back we've got to its birth somewhere. in China. Yeah, it's spent a lot of time in the States. Brazil, Brazil. <laughs> before it got retired uh, down here in New Zealand. Do you have any idea what it was transporting? No. That we no. don't know. That's it's a, a mystery. mystery. Yeah, <laughs> some good scratches in the wood, yeah. some dents in the walls. The stories so, they could tell. Yeah, use your imagination. <laughs> I don't know. Absolutely, but its passport has been stamped a few right. times by the sounds of it. Yeah, yeah, but I think it's found its home. Now before we go inside the container, I would love to talk about what's going on out here. Yeah, well we really got into gardening. It's a small space, so we did want to steal a little bit more space from the balustrade, so we built some recycled timber pots outside and cantilevered out our hedging, just to give us a bit of privacy, but also steal some space back. Very cool yeah. idea. <laughs> and the other um, recent addition was the bath that we put in. Cause I've always loved a good bath, and we had a lot of um, old timber, and so we framed in an old bath, and it's a seat as well as a bath, so. Kind of versatile and you can come out here at night and sit under the stars it's actually quite dark there's no street lights yeah you can go for a swim come back have a bath yeah. afterwards it's been a good addition it's all recycled timbers from a friend's house who was yeah. renovating it's got a sort of a two-piece lid so you can have half up half down put your snacks on there if you like <laughs> glass of wine and we've also got the baby bath in there because we've got a new addition <laughs> who likes that one yeah yeah so but then it's quite nice and camouflage. You wouldn't know it's a bath as soon as you came up. So we didn't want it to be right in your face. Yeah. Now, as you say, you've got the new addition. Yeah. Your daughter is two months, two old, months old today, old today. Yeah, isn't she? That's right. Yeah. Yep. Month birthday. <laughs> so she's hanging with the grandparents at the moment. Yeah. But um, that's been great bringing her into the house and changing things around. You'll see mostly plywood interior. It's easy to build stuff and have it fit in with what was already there. Well, hmm. I'm excited to yeah. see what you've done. Can we go inside and check come it out? In. <laughs> All right, come on in. All right, thank you. Yes, 
place looks amazing. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> it definitely is very spacious in here. When you think shipping container, mm -hmm. you don't really think of having all of this space, do you? No, you don't. Having the high cube shipping container makes a huge difference. We've got a little bit more height to play with, really. Yep, and we also, keeping this entry bit full width, I think has helped because you come in and you get that full expanse yeah. without building too much out from the walls in the middle. Now, it looks like you have got a lot of very interesting things going on in here. Can you first of all talk to me a bit about how you approached the design of your home? YouTube, I guess, sort of sparked of the flame, watching your videos, of course. Yeah. And then planning. Yeah. Rough ideas early. Yeah, we roughed stuff up in Google SketchUp and then just sort of played around with paper really in the end. We hadn't really ever been in a tiny home before we built this, so it was quite, mm a strange exercise, it was fun. And we certainly didn't nail it straight off the bat, you know, we had an idea and then we did work with some young architects that mm. were starting up a firm and talked to them and then they tweaked things and got a lot of great feedback from yeah. them. Great. Yeah. And when it comes to building the home, was this a DIY project? Not really. Those same guys that were the architects have a construction arm and they had a CNC router and a builder on staff. So he was chief builder. I was kind of his hammer hand and helped out and Kim was there as well helping. And second hammer hand. <laughs> second hammer hand and then we were able to finish things yeah. off together. So we did do a lot of putting together but I wouldn't claim being the sole builder. No, and we learned a lot along the way. It was a really, really great exercise. Yeah. Now that CNC, is that how you managed to do this spectacular relief on the roof? Yeah, so the designers, they said anything that I could draw, they could cut into the ceiling. So. That was a really fun challenge and so we ended up using a motif of ginkgo leaves which are the tree that we planted on our wedding day and then interspersed with species that we found in countries where we lived or traveled so it was a really fun thing to design i really love how it just brings that whole half of the house to life yeah it's a real feature but it's quite subtle it's not in your face it's quite nice seeing people react and like oh there's a tui or there's a fox hmm. you don't see it straight away now let's talk about this half of the container first of all because it looks like there is a lot going on down this end. Mm. Mm -hmm. So mostly living room I guess before we had our baby and now it is a nursery slash living room. Got the reduced ceiling height because we're raised up down there and that allows us to do lots of fun things underneath. So that was kind of a compromise, have sleeping low and living a little bit higher because most of the time in the living room you're sitting so you don't so much need the extra ceiling height. And we also didn't want it to feel like you were walking into someone's bedroom so you felt quite mm. comfortable coming in and having a, yeah. a sit in our lounge. And so how does everything work underneath here with the bed and everything? Mm. What's that set up like? <laughs> okay well first thing we've got over here I guess is the step uh, which also doubles as a trunk so this opens up, at the moment it's toy storage, but we keep a bit of things in there. And then on the sides, we've got two long side trunks. So one each, they're both two meters long. And so each one of these pulls out, it's just felt on the bottom. So the felt slides on the smooth floor and there's heaps of storage in here for clothes or whatever. The good thing about these is that they open up and you've got cushions the whole way along. So you can flip over as many of those as you need. There is a dining table down here. When we made these drawers, there's actually a space at the back of the cavity. So we chucked a little door in, not knowing what we would use it for. And eventually we made this table to fit the space. And so that comes out from there and is a fold down table that does coffee table height and dining table height and gets wider and things like that. <laughs> that is yeah. such a clever <laughs> idea. So how many can you actually seat here then? Eight comfortably, but we could probably push it a bit more if you wanted to come for dinner, get some friends around. <laughs> and then what about the bed? How does that all work? Right, the bed is yeah, sort of the main innovation that lets everything else work and it is attached to the front trunk. So that pulls out from here to about there. And then we have a lockable caster here and that's in place. Going anywhere. And what size bed is this? It's a double. Such a good idea as well because having the bed on the floor like this, you've got lots of space around you. There's no way that you could feel cramped like if you were in a sleeping loft or something like that. And it just completely tucks out of the way when not in use. That's right. Yep. You don't really have to make it in the morning. It just rolls away. <laughs> and it also feels important that we're looking away from the kitchen. Mm. So you don't feel like you're sleeping near a kitchen even though you are. And then above all of that, we've got the lounge. Yeah, the lounge is a great space. It works really well, especially with our new addition of our daughter. 
we ended up having to move the lounge out slightly to accommodate her uh, cot. And that space has actually given us more living space, hasn't it? Mm. It's a bit more comfortable now. Yeah, more living and more storage. So there's yeah. extra storage underneath the platform at the back of the bed now, which is space we didn't have before. And also putting in the curtain around the cot has been quite useful because there's a few different configurations we can have that curtain just on the cot or screening off that whole end of the house if we need to or take the curtain down altogether. Living in the container home with the baby has been really, really wonderful. It's opened our eyes to how functional this house is and how adaptable it is. So it's really changed with what her needs have been. We certainly haven't mm. made the house any bigger, but it feels like it is with her here. Mm. It actually feels like the house has become more functional with her space. Yeah, it definitely yeah. feels right. It feels like it's designed for her, even though mm. it wasn't. Yeah. And she's close, but she's still got her own space. To be honest, it's all she's ever known and it's all we've ever known with our life with her so far. And we will be open to adapting when she mm. needs more space. The more you think about it and design for what's coming your way, the more satisfying it is. My philosophy <laughs> on babies is that whatever you're doing, they'll get used to and they will fit in with your life. And you will fit in with theirs. And it's, it's great. It's good fun. <laughs> So another really nice feature of the lounge is the shipping container door that we welded out at the end. So it just gives a little bit of an illusion of extra space and gives it a little bit of a feature. Nice. Yeah. It helps to break up the lines in the house as well and maybe stops it looking so boxy, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think it gives it a little bit of an architectural flair. Definitely. Yeah. And lots of book storage everywhere, which makes yeah. sense because hmm. you are actually a children's book illustrator, That's aren't right. you? Yeah, it's been a very fun career to get into. And I think when we started the design of the house, we knew that we wanted to be quite minimal, but the one thing we have a lot of is books. And so we want them on display because they're such beautiful things. And just looking at your wedding photos over <laughs> here, you even had a container cake for your wedding. We did. We did. We're a little bit obsessed. My cousin got that made for us and it was really special. Felt really fun cutting into it as well. Very satisfying. Yeah, the container cake was a nice surprise. And then what do we have down the other end here? The kitchen, a very nice sized kitchen as well. Probably one of the bigger kitchens I've worked in for a while. Yeah, we didn't want to compromise too much. So we've got the sort of galley layout. Mm. It's nice to have a stainless steel bench as well as Remu yeah. wooden bench. And they were both free. This was a gift uh, found in a friend's basement when they were renovating. So the kitchen's been awesome. It's sort of not too much compromise. We've got a full size fridge dishwasher, the oven is also a microwave, and um, a pull-out pantry. Yeah, we couldn't really want more in this kitchen. And it looks like you've built a tremendous amount of storage in here as well. Mm. And that was all really fun to do. We drew it to scale, and then our architects were able to mock that up in CAD, and then we had it all cut out with the CNC router. So all that we could design the handles, all the shapes and sizes of the shelves. Yeah, quite satisfying. And we knew that storage is important in a small space, yeah. so we just, wherever there was space for a cupboard, we'll chuck one in, <laughs> but still keeping it sort of open and airy. And we were even able to use a lot of our scrap plywood from the build to build kickback cupboards underneath all of the kitchen. So they're under here, little leather tabs like the other trunks, and they're just running on adhesive felt as well. Yeah, and down this end, we've got the bathroom and a bit of hanging storage space. So we've got two sliding doors um, to separate the bathroom from the kitchen. And then what we did in this little space is we installed a super tub, which is a bathroom sink, but it's also good to have a bigger tub for hand washing or any sort of tub needs and a mirror cabinet, linen storage, that sort of thing in this zone. So kind of useful area. And opposite that, we have hanging storage, bags and tramping stuff, and then more drawers here. So we each have a drawer, and then we've got drawers up the top full of nappies. <laughs> full of nappies now. Yeah, crucial. <laughs> so that was a new addition to add some more drawers there as well when the baby came along. And then toilet and shower back here. Yeah, we didn't want to compromise too much with this space either. So it's a 750 by 900 shower and normal size flushing toilet and having them opposite each other you've still got quite a lot of space and also having a non-frosted window there's a nice view out there and it lets a lot of light in this end of the house and then with the baby <laughs> you've made some other really interesting mm. adjustments back there haven't you <laughs> yeah that was a fun little project just to add a change table so there's that space you're not often changing nappies and using the toilet <laughs> so we made a change table above the toilet that folds down. Very clever idea. It works great. 
So, how long have you both been living in the tiny house now? Ooh, about three and a half years, coming up to it. That's quite a while, yeah. eh? How are you finding life in here? It's fantastic. I think we say many times a week we are so lucky to live in this house. I think it just keeps getting better. Yeah, the combination of the house and the location is just, we feel very lucky. So having already lived in the home for now three and a half years and now having made a few adjustments to it as well for the <laughs> new addition, this really has proven itself to be a great and versatile home for you both. Yeah, the more we're here, the more we kind of are used to living in the space and I think we're tidier now that we're in a small Definitely. space. You know, everything has a place and we put things away. You can't leave too much lying around or else it gets to you. So we're tidier now. I think we still have people around to visit a lot and we enjoy the neighborhood and enjoy the community. And it's been great. Yeah, I think that's a feature is that you get out of the house more. So you do plan activities, you get outside, go to the beach. It's a great compromise. I think living in a small home has taught us that yeah, material possessions aren't everything. We can get rid of a lot of stuff that we didn't actually need and we don't acquire much anymore. It's just simplifying that what's really important. The important things are people and spending time mm -hmm. with the people that are important to you and Things are still nice, like it's nice to have nice things, but you don't gain anything from having a massive quantity of nice things. Yeah, just it's of just them. as nice to have a few nice things mm -hmm. that you really treasure than to have a whole mountain of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so let's talk about the costs that were involved in realizing this home. There was quite a bit of earthworks and foundations, and it is a fully consented house with double glazing, insulation, etc. So we think, including the deck and everything, we were somewhere close to $100,000. Yeah. Which is brilliant by the time you've added the council consents That's and everything right. on. Mm -hmm. This is a really phenomenal result for that. Yeah. yeah, we feel like we got a custom made house for that amount of money and it feels just right for us. The fact that it's a smaller home and it didn't cost you know mm. a huge mortgage to make it, it really takes the pressure off other parts of your life. So yeah. we've been working away at our t-shirt business, Tumbleweed Tees, and that's great. It's just a two person business, so it's no massive enterprise, but it brings in enough money to afford us a really nice standard of living yeah. and a really nice house with nice things. If it was a really big house with a big mortgage, there would be much more pressure to have a higher income probably and mm -hmm. less time as well. You know, a higher income means more time at work and less time for your passion projects. Mm -hmm. And Kimberly's been able to launch her. Yeah. Picture book career wouldn't have happened yeah. if we'd both had salaried jobs that we had to go to every day. So I think it's given me that opportunity to really concentrate on that passion. And then also having our daughter James is here every day, so I think it's really allowed us to have an amazing family work-life balance. Mm. And Kim, you have recently published a children's book about tiny houses, yes, haven't you? Yes, I have. So I think the obsession got to me, um, having watched so many tiny home videos that I wrote a book about them. And the book features a puffin architect, female of course, and she goes on a tour showing two little pufflings where to find their perfect home and how to design it. So that's been really fun. <laughs> I love it. Well, congratulations on publishing a thank book. You. That is such a huge task. And thank you both so much for showing me your home. It really is stunning. I love the location. I love the style. I love the design. It's fantastic how you've managed to create a wonderful live and work scenario here. Thank you both so much that's for sharing nice. it with me. <laughs> Thanks, Bryce. It was fun. That Cheers. Was really fun. I think James and Kim have done such a great job with this home. After three and a half years, you can really see how well they've now settled into the space. There are so many brilliant design features in here that make it a very functional house. And with the addition of the new baby, you can see that it's also proven itself to be a very versatile home. Going forward, it's going to be really exciting to see how this space continues to evolve.